okay that is not how your rv landing gear jack is supposed to sound did you hear that clicking noise if you have a fifth wheel rv like this one with these types of landing jacks they will eventually fail and this one hasn't completely failed yet i can tell by the sound though that it's getting pretty close when one of these does completely fail it can actually be a little scary and it'll also leave you in a pretty bad situation so the goal for today's video is to show you how to prepare for when this happens and to show you what to do so that you can get back on the road again until you can get this jack replaced. I'm also going to be replacing this jack right here. So I'll show you how to do that in case you want to save some money by doing the replacement yourself, which really isn't too difficult. The first thing you need to be prepared for when something like this happens is to have a bottle jack that's going to be sized appropriately for your camper. So we have a 10,000 pound camper here and we have a 12,000 pound bottle jack. This is more than enough for what we need and I use this for many applications. Actually I, I use this to uh, jack up the trailer for whenever I'm doing maintenance on the wheel bearings and such as well. So very handy to have, good to have with you. The next thing you need are going to be some good sized wood blocks like this. This is a 6x6 six six block and some other wooden pieces here. Something that's going to give you enough height to get under here for this bottle jack. This bottle jack goes up to about 16 inches when it's fully extended, so it has to be up on some blocks. And you can see right here was where I jacked it up before. Here's a steel beam that runs from the front all the way to the back. So you definitely want to make sure you're under a nice solid support and the steel beam is the place to be. If you get in a situation where your jack is starting to fail or has completely failed, you can then use this bottle jack to assist run the landing gear control right here. They can extend that while you use the jack to jack up the camper and that will assist when you do that and it will take off the stress from the jack so if it hasn't completely failed it won't completely fail on you we've actually had to do that several times recently when we were just out boondocking and we actually had another time when this side completely failed we've only we only had the camper for about two years uh, on our way back from why all the way out in wyoming we were stopped in nebraska by this beautiful lake and we went to uh, leave to continue on our journey and we ended up having an issue we went to raise the trailer up and this particular jack right here gave out fortunately no major damage occurred the trailer whenever that gave out shifted down kind of uh, rapidly on this side but fortunately the other jack did hold so i was able to lower it back down all the way and then I had someone come out from a towing company. They helped me out. They used a jack on this side here to raise the trailer back up while I operated the jack system from the other side to, to support that side, raise that up. And we got it back on. We've been traveling like this for almost a week now um, with just like you see right here, hooked up. Uh, we had to find spots along the way that were level do a few things like this add some boards underneath the tires to raise up the front when we needed to or add some boards in the back to raise it up in order to get the whole thing level really important to be prepared for that situation and also so you know these do have some grease zerk fittings right here and here on them so that you can lubricate them periodically and we do that as well. However, I don't really think it matters how many times you lubricate these, they will eventually fail no matter what, especially whenever you use the camper as much as we do. Uh, we're full-time RVing, so uh, we're always uh, raising and lowering these jacks. Here is the new jack that I ordered off of Amazon. It was, I think about $159, maybe something like that. And it is, LCI part number 179014, which is the jack leg follower. There's a lead leg and there's a follow leg. 
and that side over here is the follow leg and how you tell the difference is uh, the follow leg is going to be on the side without the motor so you can see over here that this would be the lead leg you'll also want to know the length of the entire unit which is 32 inches here for us and the outer tube which is just the black powder coated black part which is 29 and a half and you're also going to need to know the distance between the stops here so for ours the inside dimension from inside stop to inside stop is approximately 15 and a half inches and then you can measure the outside stop to outside stop which is 17 and a half inches and that way you can correctly identify which leg you're going to need and one thing i would recommend if you can contact either your dealer or your rv manufacturer to find out exactly what make and model of jack you have here the capacity and everything uh, that way you're 100 percent sure of what you have in the rv and you can make sure that you get the exact right components for good measure i decided to use a second jack here just in case this jack for some reason decided to give out uh, but uh, we're all ready to go here all right with all that out of the way now we just have these two bolts to loosen up Next step is to take this bolt out and that'll allow me to slide this arm over. And then we just use a bungee cord to support that for the time being. That screw right here that we'll have to remove. take this foot off too in order to be able to get it up and out of here. All right, with this jack out of the way here, this might give you a better idea of where the support is and it's kind of wild really because uh, this is all that's supporting it. You can see where it was riding right here and right here in between these two stops. Whenever you jack it up or down, it has support in either direction. All right, so let's take a look inside here in the gearbox. And you actually can replace the gears inside of here, other than there is a long worm gear that runs down through here. Uh, I don't know that that can be replaced. I haven't seen it online anywhere. It does look like this has been kind of struggling here. You can see those gears are kind of beat up. So that might actually be something I do next time around is actually just order the gears and have those on hand. Let's take a look inside the new one. There is a, a good bit more grease. Take a little bit of that grease, move it aside so we can see. And yeah, it does look like it's in much better shape than this one over here. So yeah, you can see these are all squared off here. So uh, I think that that's the issue. And even the one on the bottom, those are more square than this side over here. Bracket nut should be torqued down between 10 and 18 foot pounds and you shouldn't have less than two and three-eighths inches between the inside of the bracket flanges. And now we're gonna make sure that both jacks are the same height. This one is already down a bit, so it's at four and an eighth. And we'll just turn this and bring this down until it's at four and an eighth. I also bought some new quick release pins for both legs as the other ones, as you can see, are in pretty bad shape. All right, that sounds better. All right, guys, well, batteries are back in, power's back on, and we have a new landing leg. So uh, hopefully this video will help you out or maybe some of the advice that I gave you in this video. If it did, please give me a big thumbs up down below and feel free to 
give a comment down below if any questions or anything like that I'd be happy to answer them for you otherwise we'll see you on the next video